Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a world of luxury and exclusivity that few can imagine. Today, we're exploring the ultimate status symbol, owning your own private island. But just how much does it really cost to live out your fantasies on a secluded piece of paradise? Join us as we take a deep dive into the world of private island ownership. Owning your own private island is like nothing else. It may sound like a dream, but it's an expensive one. Today, we're going to look at how much it really costs and try to answer the big question. Is it worth it to have your own private island? When you buy a private island, the first big expense is, of course, buying the island itself. You might dream about cabanas in the white sand and maybe even a golf course on the north side of the island. But to make those dreams come true, you need to find the right place to build a base. Still, the price of your island is very different based on where you buy it. In Canada, which has the most private islands for sale in the world, you can buy one for less than $200,000. And if you really want to save money, you can get one for just under $100,000. You can buy Half Island, an island in Nova Scotia, for $65,000, which is less than half the price of your average house. This six-acre island is less than a mile from the mainland, and you can buy it for a price. However, there is a catch. Sure, $65,000 is a lot of money for your own little piece of paradise, at least in the summer. But in the winter, around half the island can get as cold as negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. The island is only good for living on during the summer. And even then, it can be hard to get supplies. When you think of a private island, you probably don't think of a cold remote place. Instead, you probably think of a place with sandy beaches, palm trees, and a dress code of flip-flops. Most likely, when you think of the Caribbean, you picture thousands of islands with hills, white sand beaches, and clear water. The Caribbean is a beautiful place to build your own dream tropical oasis, and there are a lot of islands to choose from. Surprisingly, the prices aren't that outrageous either. If you're willing to settle for a small piece of land in a less desirable area, you can buy an island for between $1 and $3 million. However, if you want a bigger island in a more famous area of the Caribbean, the price can range from $30 to $100 million. Some popular island chains are the Exumas, the Abaco Island, and the Berry Island. These chains in particular have a benefit that remote islands don't. They're close to bigger towns and cities, which makes it easier for visitors and owners to get there. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and the notification bell to stay updated on our daily videos. Take Specabilis Island, which is located in the central Exuma case. The island is 46 acres and has dozens of white sand beaches, beautiful views for hilltops, and a lot of room for building. It is only 230 miles from Miami and 60 miles from the capital. It's expensive, but it's easy to get to and gives you the bonus of being able to say, yes, I have an island in the Exumas. Then there are more remote parts of the Caribbean, like the 700-acre Little Broken Island, which is for sale for $35 million. Compared to Spectabilis Island, you get almost twice as much space for less than half the price. And that's not all. Ripped Island has two ponds, which means you can get fresh water and it has 30,000 feet of shoreline, which is about 5.6 miles. You'll have the whole 5.6 miles of shoreline to yourself. Though, because the 110 mile long Ragged Island chain is very undeveloped and has only one small town with 72 people. In other words, if you want to go to a nightclub or a fancy dinner, you might as well not buy this island. All of the islands we've looked at, no matter how much they cost or where they are, have one thing in common. They aren't developed. At first, this may not seem like a big deal. 
After all, if you have enough money to buy a private island, you should be able to build a house on it, right? Well, not really. Because when you buy a private island, you're paying for a lot more than just the land to build a house on. First, you need to figure out if you can build on the island at all. Because the climate in places like the Caribbean is so fragile, there are strict rules about how to build there. Before you make any changes to the island you just bought, you have to pay for an environmental effects study, which isn't cheap. It will cost you at least $50,000. And these kinds of laws are also popular in Canada, where endangered animals may live on the lake and ocean islands. In Ontario, you can only build on an island if there is more than an acre of land that can be used for building. This means that buying a very small island for the price of your monthly paycheck isn't really worth it unless you want to camp on top of the expensive environmental study that has to be done before you build. There are a lot of laws that protect the environment that will make your build more expensive. To protect the beautiful lakes and seas, there are a lot of rules about how to get water, how to make electricity, and how to get to the island. So. Think about how much that will add to the normal cost of building a house. Putting aside the natural issues, there are still a lot of practical things to figure out. First, there's the cost of sending building materials to the island, which isn't cheap. You'll need to bring heavy building materials to the island, which will take a special boat. Once you've spent tens of thousands of dollars to get the supplies to your door, you'll need plumbers and electricians to the island every day to put them to use. If your island is very far from the nearest town with hotels, like Little Ripped Island in the Caribbean, it will cost a lot just to get your construction crew there. Plus, you have to build a way for your chosen mode of transportation to get to the island. If you want to get to the island quickly, you could build an airstrip. But most figures say that would cost more than a million dollars. I mean, a helicopter is less expensive. Or you could go with a dock for boats and seaplanes. But both will still cost you a lot. Still, it's a lot easier to buy an island that has been built up than one that hasn't. One Take Frozen K is a 40-acre island in the Berry Island Groups in the Bahamas. It costs $17 million and is easy to get to by boat or seaplane. It has white sand beaches, lush forests, a 4,145 square foot house with six bedrooms and six bathrooms, and a heated swimming pool. There is also an 806 square foot manager's cottage and a 1,534 square foot staff cottage, as well as a marina that can feed yachts up to 100 feet long. But Frozen K brings up another cost that comes with owning a private island. Care. If you have enough money for a private island, you're probably pretty busy with work and won't be able to spend all your time sipping piña coladas on the beach. Leaving the house vacant puts you at risk of squatters breaking in and doing other damage. So, the island needs to be occupied and cared for. I've spent most of this video talking about the cost of having your own private island, but there's also a chance to make money when you're not there. Private island rentals are very popular among wealthy people. Islands like Staniel K in the Bahamas have a minimum cost of $14,000 per day, but that's just for two people. Each extra person costs $500 per day. So bringing just four more people will cost at least 16000 per day, not including tips. In other words, if you own that island, you can make a lot of money. If you rent out Staniel K as a double lodging at the lowest rate every day of the year, the property will bring in at least $5 million. Having a private island is a great way to make more money, but I'd be wrong not to mention the other great thing about it. It's like having a little piece of paradise. Having your own place to go that's far away from everyone else is a joy like no other. You can wake up and walk down to your own beach, sip wine on your own deck, and watch the ocean in your underwear if you want, because it's your island. 
people dream of having their own private islands for many different reasons. So, now it's time to answer the big question. How much is it worth to own your own island? I guess you'll have to decide that for yourself. Are the crazy costs, time-consuming rules, and hard work of getting building materials and services to the island worth being able to live there? How do you feel? That's it for today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up below, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. We post videos every week, so stay notified. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next video.